Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to look at the newest beta of Cutefish OS, 0.4.2. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and at the end of the day, if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. Also, if you want to follow me on my socials, or better yet, become a patron to the channel, those links are below. So if you download Cutefish, throw it on a USB, or open it in a virtual machine, this is the screen you're met with. I actually changed it, the background, actually this one right here, and I like the little darker version. And I just want to show you all something real quick. When you first open the terminal, it's got a real opaque terminal. You can see all the way through it. Complete transparency. So when you do something like, let's see if they have H top. How about top? So you have top. You can read that okay, especially on this background over here. You can see it just fine. But if you change to something darker, like this one, it's really hard to see anything. So just a heads up, if you are looking at Cutefish as a possible daily driver, that you'll want to definitely make adjustments on the opacity in the terminal and other windows. So we will go ahead and close out of this. I want to zip over to their website real quick. Basically says, Cute Fish OS, make a better desktop OS, focus on simplicity, beauty, and practicality, better user experience, simple and exquisite design, use of the most suitable design to enhance user experience, and then they've designed their own series of Cute Fish OS applications to ensure that the user experience is unified, which I respect and I like. Cute Fish OS has global menu at the top. It is a collection of all functions of an application, which is very convenient. And I have looked, and this may be something that's coming. Let me change and put the title bar back up top and see if that makes a difference. So it doesn't. I don't have a global menu for Firefox. So it may be something that they're still working on. And let's just see if it's just a Firefox exclusive. Let's open up, say, File Manager. Let's maximize. There we go. File Manager does have the global menu up top integrated into the bar. Let's close that. Let's try Kate. Maximize so you get the global menu with Kate. So that is your text editor. Close out of that. I want to go ahead and right click again. New folder. Select all. We've already changed the background. We will go check out settings. And in settings you have the LAN, Ethernet. I'm going to go ahead and shut the Wi-Fi off. Especially if you're on a laptop it'll just run your battery down. Display, appearance, there is a dark theme. Let's switch that over. I do like the dark theme because you get a little bit of that opacity over here on the menu side. And then you can change your highlight color if you choose. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at red. And then you can dim the wallpaper with the theme. So you can click on that and it would dim your wallpaper in the background. That's pretty nice. That would come in handy. So you could set it up with dark mode, turn on system effects. Turn on dim the wallpaper, and when you went into a dark mode, it would dim the wallpaper automatically. Pretty impressive. System effects, if you notice up here, you've got nice rounded corners on the window. If you come down here and click off system effects, those will eventually square up. See there? You get the normal square windows that you generally are used to seeing. And then you can click those back on, and it rounds them off for you. There we go. Fonts. You can come over here, general font. Is any fixed font is deja vu sans motto. Now you can go with medium font, large font, or huge font. So you can change those to your liking. Backgrounds we've looked at. And I think I've got probably a better looking one up now, but I'm gonna go ahead and let's just go ahead and change it to that. So that way if we get into terminal and we need to see, we can actually see. And then the dock. You got a small, medium, large, or huge dock. We're on medium. You can click it to small, large huge i'm going to go ahead and leave it at large you can always show it you can always hide it or you can smart hide so when you open up a window it'll go away and you can have it on the left of your screen or the right of your screen which i do believe is pretty handy for the simple fact that more monitors today are wider than they are tall so that way you can use up less real estate and give your screen more view area especially if you put it on smart hide Come over here, click on Firefox, and you've got the whole screen. So that way you can do what you need to do. I didn't think I changed the text, but I guess I did. 
Let's run back over into settings. Let's go to fonts. Go back to background. Okay, seems like everything changed back there. Let's go ahead and minimize that. Let's close Firefox and reopen. Still showing a different font up here. Maybe just a bug. This is a beta version. Just something we have to deal with, I take it. So we'll go back to Cutefish's website. Security and stability. Cutefish is based on the open source Linux kernel. Linux is more secure than other operating systems. It has developers from all over the world to review its code. It is open source. And then down at the bottom, links to about, docs, friends, Jing OS, community forum, GitHub, Twitter. So you come to the community if you decide to install it, you can go to the forum and get answers to problems that you could be having. So we will go ahead and close out of that. So let's go back to settings. Background, we've already changed. Doc, we went over. User, you can come up here and set your user information up. Mouse, date and time, language, battery, power, and about. System version, 0 0.4. System types, x86-64. Kernel version is 5.11.0-31. Right now, I think they just released 5.14. So you're about three generations back on the kernel. And then we got the AMD Ryzen processor. I've only issued it two cores. And then RAM, you've got two gigabytes. And then internal storage, I'm running on a virtual machine. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of settings. Right now, I want to go look at the package manager for software. You've got the Muon package manager. Let's make that bigger if we can. And it tells you right here, these are all games. You can go down here, look for specific kinds of applications. Let's say video software. Then you can go up and do a search. Let's OBS. And there's OBS Studio and OBS Plugins. That was pretty quick, pretty responsive. Let's try Caden Live. And there's Caden Live. You just click on it. All you'd have to do is come over here and click on it. And then apply changes. Once you click on that, it would install the program. Once it's done, you could proceed to start searching for other applications that you would like to install. One thing I do like about it is it tells you right here, before you even click apply, on some other distributions, when you click apply, it'll have a pop-up screen and say, here's all the dependencies we're going to have to add. Is that okay? This one right here tells you right off the bat, details, technical details, dependencies. It tells you what other dependencies it's going to need. So that's what's going to get installed with it. Different versions and the change list. And you can do it by status, by origin, or by architecture. And let's go up here. Let's go to settings. Configure package manager. And right here on general, it says ask to confirm changes that affect other packages. Yes. Treat recommended packages as dependencies. Yes. Treat suggested packages as dependencies. If you want to, you can check that, and basically what it'll do is it'll let you know these other packages are suggested as well, but they're going to let you know that they are dependencies to that. So that's up to you. And then allow the installation of untrusted packages. So I would leave that alone if I were you. If you want to get in here and you're a little bit more experienced, you can definitely change these settings to your liking, but that's up to you. So let's go ahead and close out of the move on package manager. Let's take a look at the file manager. Okay, file manager is open. Let's click on it. Let's take a look at it real quick. It's clean. It's simple. Let's go look at the about. Okay, the about isn't working. So this is Cutefish's version of file manager. Not quite sure what it's forked off of. It is just a small, clean, fast, efficient file manager. So you can get work done. It doesn't get in your way. See if there's any new folders, properties, edit. What can you do? Cut, copy, paste, select all, and then help just about. So and these are locked into place. You can't move those. Let's right click down here. Nothing. So you got your usual suspects over here, and then you got your base folders right here. Like I said, it's small, simple, elegant, just lets you get work done and doesn't get in your way. So we will close out a file manager. Now we're going to go to the application launcher. And we've got a settings manager and settings. So let's take a look at settings manager. So we've got appearance. Let's make that a little bigger. Let's go ahead and click on appearance. So appearance comes up. You've got widget styles. Right now they're set on breeze. And then some QT styles may ignore these colors. You can come down and change window, view, selection, link. You can change all your colors within the system if you choose to. Icon theme. I don't like their icon for icon theme. It's got an Apple logo on it. I know there are a lot of people ate up with the Apple ecosystem and their icons and this and that and the other, but... 
with such a beautiful desktop and what they're trying to do, I don't think they need to cheapen themselves by putting an Apple logo on the icon theme. That's my opinion. Tell me what you think below in the comments. QT theme. None fonts. Deja Vu Sans, normal. Point size. You can actually make them bigger if you want, I guess. Let's apply. Nothing changed. It's a beta. That'll probably be fixed in future release. And then your cursor, Breeze by KDE and Breeze Light by KDE. That's what we're using. If you go to this one, you can choose a different or you can choose this. So we shall close out of that. Then you've got brightness, date and time, file associations, keyboard and mouse, locale, pulse audio preferences. You can click on that. Now, one thing I have recognized, and I'm just going to let you all know about this, and it's probably something you'll be able to change. Most settings managers that I go into, when I see something, I just click it once, and it'll open for me. You have to double-click them here. So if you download this and you're playing with it on a USB or in virtual machine, just know that you're going to have to double-click those icons for them to open. Monitor settings, additional drivers, cute fish full upgrade, printers, SDDM configuration, and software sources. Let's look at what kind of software sources we got. As expected, because it is based on Ubuntu, you've got canonical, community-maintained, proprietary, and software restricted by copyright. Other software, CD-ROM, Cutefish, Launchpad, Launchpad.net. Cutefish is there for the simple fact if they do updates to the desktop environment, they have to have a PPA or a repository. Updates, important security updates, recommended updates, additional drivers, statistics, so we'll close out of that. And we will close out of that. Let's go back over to the application launcher. You do have Belina Etcher installed out of the box, which I think is great. If you're somebody that is presently on Linux and you want to try a different Linux operating system out and you want to burn it to a USB, Belina Etcher makes it very simple. Bluetooth manager, install Cutefish, calculator, file manager, screenshot settings, terminal, Camoso, Index, Gwynview, Elisa, Communicator, Arc. You can tell by Arc and Elisa and other applications that are on Cutefish. You can see the heavy KDE inspiration, obviously. MPV Media Player, Firefox, Discord installed out of the box. So if you're on Discord, you can, it's already installed. You can just go get it set up. Kate, Muon, Package Manager, Nota, Pix, Shelf, Scanlight, Spectacle, which is your screenshot program, BLC, Media Player, Startup Disk Creator, Cute Fish Upgrade, Transmission, Telegram, QPDF View, Clip, and Booth. And that's all that you get installed out of the box. So let's close that. Okay, just one more thing before we get done here. Let me go ahead and click on this. If you want to download Cute Fish and give it a shot, it's not on their website yet because this is a beta. You're going to want to go to cutefish ubuntugithub io slash download once you get there you've got two links you can download it from mega or you can download it from a direct link i will say this i clicked direct link and at 20 minutes i was only at about 10 percent. i clicked on mega and it was downloaded in about nine minutes so i would recommend the download link at mega zip on over download it throw it on a usb put it in a virtual machine and put it through your paces i'll have to say it's pretty snappy I'm running it in a machine that I've only assigned two gigabytes of RAM to and two CPUs. And at rest, we're using about 700 megabytes of RAM. And that's pretty light. That's really light. So even if you've got an older system that's only got four gigs of RAM and you want to throw Cutefish on it, it's going to be pretty snappy. It's going to be pretty quick. So tell me what you think of Cutefish OS Beta below. Would you use it as a daily driver? Do you agree with me on not having any kind of Apple icons in the system? Do you think the desktop environments like Cutefish are the future of Linux? Throw a comment down below. Let me know. I like it. I'm impressed. Do me a favor before you go. Like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and at the end of the day, if you don't like me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, or better yet, become a patron to the channel, those links are down below in the description. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.